people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. So we're back with my ever popular almanac series looking at what witchcraft you can do when and on which day during the month of November. So as always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that run throughout the month of November, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft on which day, when and why. So with that said, let's start with my overview. The start of November is a mishmash of pagan, Christian and other religious festivals. We've got Samhain finishing on the 1st of November. We've got All Saints and All Souls in the Christian calendar. The great Feast of Diwali is happening as well as the Mexican Dia de los Huertos. There's all sorts of things going on in the beginning of November. However, a lot of it is about looking at the dead because November is a month for the dead. Samhain has always been a festival of celebration, not just for the changing of the seasons, but for the dead. It's when the veil between the worlds was at its thinnest and therefore we can talk to the other spirits around us. The energy at this time of year is quite chaotic. We start doing rituals to calm the chaos in this time. Hence, we have the big rituals of Samhain, the lighting of the bonfires, the lighting of light in order to welcome in the winter. It is no surprise that plenty of witches were burnt at the stake at this time of year in our history. The persecutors of the witch would use the ritual bonfires that are around at this time to put the witch on top of it. So just watch out, the witch finder general is about at the moment. November is, of course, the season of the witch. It is our time. In fact, I'm having my witchcraft retreat at this time on the 22nd of November. There is one place left. Go to ginnymetherall.co.uk if you're interested. Now, this witchcraft retreat, we're going to do a lot of group rituals. Now, group rituals for witches during November are spectacular. They can really bring the magic to bear. Covens are at the height of their power. On Samhain, you would have initiated your new members. This is a big initiation day and a big ceremony would have been had. Now, when you've initiated your members, we all start creating the magical rituals that we need to push forward our requirements. I love November. It may be the season of the dead, but it's also the season of me. And that cannot be taken lightly after all. November is known as a windy month. This might have brought a rise to the legend of the wild hunt, because as the wind keens, you might hear the hunting horn of Hearn the Hunter. Hearn the Hunter is what we call him in the south of the UK. There is Odin to the north. Wild Eric is in the east and Gwyn ap Nudd is in Wales. The Wild Hunt is essentially where the spectral figure gallops through the land, collecting the souls of the dead. And if you happen to be travelling around at night, they might catch your soul too. You will be run before his hounds of hell, the wished hounds, and captured and taken to the other world. So you need to sort of stay indoors in November. It doesn't have a good, you know, vibe to going outside on the moor at night. You might be taken to the other world by the wild hunt. So that is my overview for the month of November. Season of the Witch, Season of the Dead, watch out for the wild hunt and understand that your power is very great at the moment. So let's get on to the nitty gritty day to day detail. And of course, we're going to start with the 1st of November. Now buckle in, there's a lot happening on the 1st. I'm going to start with the 1st of November being the night of the new moon. The new moon is in Scorpio. Now, astrologers believe that new moons take on the aspect of the star sign that they appear in. And this sign being in the passionate Scorpio means that new moons are particularly good at putting forward your innermost desires, your innermost strengths and feelings. This innermost desires gives you passion and drive. You can use the passionate power of Scorpio to drive that forward. New moons are great for new beginnings and you will see the completion of new moon spells either by the full moon, which is in two weeks time, or the next full moon in Scorpio in six months. 
The 1st of November is also officially the Day of the Dead in the Central American faith, it's Dios de los Muertos. In the Catholic tradition we have All Saints and All Souls happening today and tomorrow and in the witchcraft pagan tradition we leave offerings for the dead. So today do honour your ancestors. Now what we used to do in our old traditions is leave a candle burning in the window to light the dead back to their homes. So on the 1st of November, why don't you set up your shrine to your loved ones, leave a candle burning, an apple in front of their photograph and ask them to come and visit. And they will. Now, I can guarantee that you will not be scared by this. You will just feel that wonderful, much loved, missed presence. It will fill your heart with sadness, joy, happiness and love. So I cannot recommend this highly enough. It is also the festival of lights in the Hindu faith, Diwali, which is always a great fun celebration. And any child born on the 1st of November, you will be gifted with second sight. You are known to being very in touch with your psychic self. And in fact, all children born throughout the month of November are very in touch with their psychic self and very blessed. I only know one person born during the month of November, and that is actually my coven leader. And yeah, she's pretty gifted in uh, Second Sight. She's pretty cool, I have to say. And finally, the 1st of November is also one of the nights known as Mischief Night. Now, this is part of the lighting the bonfire, setting off fireworks, and just generally behaving with joyous and raucous abandon. The 5th of November is the night of Guy Fawkes in the UK. The whole of the UK, and especially England, celebrates this. You light a bonfire, you burn an effigy of Guy Fawkes on it, and you have lots of hot dogs, delicious food, and fireworks. It is possibly a leftover of the pagan celebrations. Pagan bonfires were banned at some point. We suspect that they were suppressed and frowned upon. And the people still wanted their bonfire, because why wouldn't you? It's a great, fun occasion. And so as a result, when Guy Fawkes committed his terrible treason, and we decided to burn effigies of him and, and produce this amazing bonfire extravaganza, the government then set in stone that we were allowed to have bonfires on the 5th of November. Now, I love bonfire night. We have the Ottery St Mary bonfire night. And as one person said, bonfire night in Ottery St Mary is one of the most alarming experiences life has to offer short of all out war. And having spent many times in Ottery, I can absolutely agree. They carry huge barrels filled with tart flaming and we're packed in like sardines and you have to try and avoid the flaming tar barrels. It is fabulous. Don't take your young children. The 7th of November is the night to cure madness. This is madness brought on generally by too much sour in celebration. So you might be possessed, you might be, you know, just overwrought or something along those lines. And I'm going to read you this old spell from a wonderful grimoire in 1482. Um, it's been translated into modern English because otherwise we don't understand it. So it says, this is a cure for acting wildly after Halloween. Take two horseshoes and heat them red hot Nail one over the thresholds and the other cover them with the urine of the afflicted and add a little salt. Boil it with the urine until it has evaporated. Keep this in a clean cloth underneath the afflicted bed and they will be cured within three days. So, interesting cure for madness, that one. I rather like it. Some people say that I'm a bit mad, so maybe I should try it. The 11th of November is the day of old Halloween. It is a day of bloodletting, blood and slaughter it's known as. It is also the day of Vanalia, which is the celebration of the new wine. It's the first day that you could try the wine that you had just made. It is a celebration of Bacchus, it's a celebration of cavorting, it's a celebration of bloodletting. This is the day we would slaughter those stock that we could not keep through the winter, so cattle and sheep. And as a result, you've got a much needed feast. Now, of course, when the Christians came along, they didn't like this celebration on the 11th of November involving lots of wine, lots of feasting, lots of eating beef. And so they put a, quite a famous saint's day upon the top of it in order to try and suppress it or change it to their religion. And so it's known as Martin Mass, St Martin's Feast Day. 
There are so many feast days, I mean, major feast days for the Christian faith in November. And this is a part of the Christians trying to suppress the pagan celebration because November is a busy month. You know, we've done the harvest, we've slaughtered our cattle, we've got some food, we've got some new wine. Um, we are lighting bonfires and having a bit of a fun time before the harshness of winter sets in. And so you'll find throughout November, if you follow any Christian religions, a lot of feast days and a lot of them were put in place to suppress the pagan celebrations happening around this time. The 15th of November is the night of the full moon. This is known as the morning moon, as in, you know, mourning the dead. The northern Native Americans called it the beaver moon because, of course, the beavers are settling into their lodges at this time and being very busy preparing for their winter months. It's the last of the three supermoons of the year. If you get a chance, do make some moon water. This moon is in Taurus, and Taurus is all about home and safety and security. So moon water made at this time is perfect for sprinkling around your doorways, your thresholds, your windows, and in fact all about your home in order to protect you from negative energies. The 21st of November is not a witchy day. I just love it. I'm just obsessed with Noah is in his ark, I think. So the 21st of November is the day when Noah leaves his ark and goes back onto the land with the animals. And I, I just thought I'd let you know. Geological surveys have found that there was a massive flood in the Middle East. So there might be some basis of truth in the Noah's Ark story. The 24th of November is that wonderful day for doing the spell to make the Christmas pudding. It's known variously as Stir Up Sunday or Pudding Day. But this is the traditions that you should follow to make your Christmas pudding. And don't you tell me that this isn't a spell. You have 13 ingredients in this spell. You must stir the pudding from east to west. Yes, so you stir it in a clockwise direction because Widdishans would be against the natural order of things. Each family member must take a turn to stir the pudding and make a wish. And this should happen from oldest to youngest. And then any visitors who happen to be in the house should stir the pudding and make a wish. Silver charms, 12 of them, are placed within the pudding and each one represents a different you know, outcome for the person who finds it in their plate. And whoever gets these charms is going to be blessed with that particular aspect of their life for the next year. So it's, I mean, if that's not a charm spell. But I do it on this day, Stir Up Sunday, which is the perfect day to make your Christmas pudding or your Christmas cake in order to have it ready for your winter festivals. The 24th of November is also the day when the sun enters the house of Sagittarius. And so, as always, I'm going to read to you from the calendar of shepherds in 1604 what they say about the Sagittarian man and the Sagittarian woman. The man born under Sagittarius shall have mercy on every man he sees. So he's quite nice, isn't he? He shall go far to desert places unknown and dangerous and shall return with great gains. He shall see his fortune increase from day to day. At 22 years, he shall have some peril, but he shall live to 72 years and eight months. Well, not a bad life, is it? And he's quite rich. Yeah, Sagittarian men, you want them, don't you? The women shall love to labour. She may not see one person weep without pity. She shall spend much silver in evil company, and she ought to be married at 13 years old, because, you know, that's obviously the perfect time to marry. And she'll have pain in her eyes at 14, probably because she saw the person she was married to. She shall be called the mother of sons, and she'll live 72 years after nature. Both man and woman shall be inconstant in deeds, but of good conscience, merciful and better to others than to themselves. And finally, we come to the 30th of November, which is the traditional St Andrew's Night. If you are of Scottish descent, you should eat haggis and drink whiskey. Now, haggis, for those of you who don't know, is sort of some offal and spices mixed into a bag and boiled. And actually, it's delicious. We have haggis quite a lot here. It is lovely. But you should also eat with your haggis some boiled sheep's head, which I have actually had boiled sheep's head. And it's OK. So. But traditionally, whiskey, haggis, boiled sheep's head tonight for you of Scottish descent. I love November. I can't wait to get together with the people on my retreat and do those group rituals because we are going to do some spectacular magic, I suspect. If you'd like to have a go, 
go to ginnymetherall.co.uk for all the details. And if you like being in a cover, go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall and join up as a coven member there. Our covens are held around the last Thursday of each month and we would love to see you there. We're a friendly bunch and you'll find it amazing. Otherwise, please just like and subscribe because it fills my heart with glee. I love subscribers and I will see you in my next video.